Hello, this is Justin of the Tech Train here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a character selection or dress up screen with your character able to be dressed up using all sorts of characteristics and styles, which is something that students find quite exciting, and it does help learn a few tools along the way. So, without further ado, let's get started. So the idea, of course, has been around for a long time, this sort of classic dress-up doll type activity. Um, but these days, most computer programs that have characters enable students uh, or children, or in fact anyone, to be able to play around with the characters and create a look that suits their style. And in this particular activity, that's just the same. The students can go to town creating as much detail as they want. It doesn't have to be limited to uh, just the face as this one does, but it can involve clothing and all sorts of gear. Um, the idea is fun, but it does actually involve uh, quite a lot of uh, tools and learning, which I'll show you in this tutorial, including being able to use and combine shape tools, how to convert shapes into images, how to use layering and the naming of shapes in the selection pane, how to use code, very simple code, and how to assign macros to shapes or buttons. So the surprising amount that's involved uh, with students can learn uh, at the same time as having a little bit of fun. So let's see how we can do this. So what I'll do then is I shall close that one. No, I don't want to save it. And we'll start with a new blank presentation. So I'm going to have a blank layout for this one. I don't want to worry too much about the style. I'm just going to show you the basic mechanics of how this works. So let's start with the, the head or the face. So we're going to use the shapes tool and I'm going to put the, the head in the middle there. Um, we don't want an outline for this and I'll just give it a, a sort of a, a pinkish color. Let's, let's go for sort of a pale yellowy pink color like that. There we are, somewhere like that. So that will be my head. And you want the head fairly large, unless of course you're doing an entire character. I have seen some students create uh, penguin dress up uh, activities. So really you're not, not limited to any one particular thing. So that's the basic background of the head. Uh, now let's do some eyes. Let's do a couple of pairs of eyes and see how we can flick between those. So first of all, I'm going to create a circle and I want this to be a perfect circle. So I'm holding the shift key down uh, so that that circle doesn't get distorted like this. So holding shift keeps that to a perfect circle. Now I am creating the eyes rather large. Uh, that's because it's easier to draw these images large scale and then shrink them down later than trying to draw tiny little details uh, to begin with. That's actually one of the tools that the students uh, learn about. I'm going to have a white center to this and uh, I won't have an outline for the eyes. I'll just keep them as, as blank white there. Um, and then I'm going to have the dot in the middle. So I'm going to press control D to duplicate that shape. Um, we'll put a black fill and then make that a bit smaller. And then there we are. We've got the first eye. Now I am just going to change the background color so that we can see this a little more clearly. So let's just uh, pull up that. Uh, a little bit. Let's just uh, put a black at the background there and a little bit of a blue in the middle there. And there we are. So get rid of that. So now we can actually see this. Looks a little bit like a, some kind of monster now, but there we are. Uh, we've got the, the first eye and uh, once I've got this eye fine, I'm going to select all of those bits, duplicate them, and then put the other copy next to it. So those are the eyes that I want to use for the first expression. Now, in fact, what I'm going to do is Control D to duplicate all of that. And for the second expression, I'm simply going to change where the eyes are looking. So in this case, they're going to be looking up like that. So that's my first pair of eyes. That's my second pair of eyes. And I also want to have a reset button uh, so that everything clears, which I'm going to put over here. And I'll just type clear for this. Uh, you'll see that in the uh, demonstration, I actually used a sort of Fortnite themed font uh, in order to make that look uh, a little bit more fun. So we can try something like that. I think I used Boulder as the font. 
uh, there we are and then we'll just fill that with a uh, an orange color and have black writing there we are so that's my clear button for later on so obviously that's the basics there's not a lot a lot uh, not a lot a lot <laughs> not much more that we need um, to get started really we just need the basic face at least two things that we can switch between and then the clear button basically that will give you an example of all the mechanics and after that it's easy to just keep on going adding more and more bits and simply uh, modifying the code that i'll give you now um the eyes will need to be grouped first of all um but there's a problem with grouping shapes in PowerPoint. Um, whereas uh, we can assign code to a single shape, we cannot assign code to a group of shapes, which is what we're gonna want. Because what we'll have is one pair of eyes that'll be actually on the face, that looks a bit freaky, but another pair of eyes somewhere off to the side that we will click on to select that expression. So effectively, the grouped shape there that we've got will become a button. So how do we overcome that problem? Well, the solution to assigning a macro or some code to a group of shapes is to select that group of shapes and cut it. And then right click. And in the paste option, you'll have two options. And the one you're looking for is picture. Now, if I click on that, this uh, now is no longer separate shapes. This is now uh, not even shapes at all. This is simply an image. Um, it is a vector image, so we can actually resize that uh, quite easily. But that is now um, an image that we can assign an action to. So once we've done that, we're going to do the same thing with these eyes. So I'm going to cut them and paste them as a picture. So that's how to convert a group of shapes into an image that can then have a button assigned to it or an action assigned to it. All right, let's do the next step. So the next thing then will be to uh, position these eyes in the right location on the face. Eyes are about halfway down the face, so I'm gonna put it about there. Uh, but what you will find in some cases is that um, the shapes are not in the right layer so in other words uh, what you might possibly have uh, eventually certainly is where one shape should be in front of the other like hair uh, which should be in front of the face but ends up behind it um, and so you'll need to swap those layers around now the quick and easy way of doing this is if i need this to always be at the back then i can right click on it and send to back that's nice and easy uh, but there is another way of doing this, and that's using the selection pane. So if you make sure you're in the Home tab and you click on Select and then Selection Pane, this opens this panel here, which identifies all of the individual items in your slide. So if I click on this picture over here, you'll see that's currently called Picture 14. The first pair of eyes is picture 13, the head is oval 3, and this button over here is rectangle 12. Now we can change the names of those, and we will in fact do that in a moment. But what you can also do is see the order in which these shapes are. So if we are imagining looking down on these shapes here, picture 14 is at the top of the pile. So it's in front of everything else. So if I bring it over there, you can see it's in front of the other eyes, it's in front of the head, and it's even in front of the button. So it is on top of everything else. Whereas oval three, we can see it at the bottom of this list or the bottom of the pile. It's behind everything else. And we can see that's true if I move that around, it is indeed behind everything else. Rectangle 12, this button, we can see is in front of the oval, but behind picture 13, which is these eyes. And if you move that along, you can see, yes, it's in front of the oval, and it is indeed behind the eyes. So we can see the layering going on there matched on the right. And what you can do is you can not only right click on these shapes and use send to back or bring to front, but you can drag them up and down this list. So if I wanted this clear button, rectangle 12, in front of everything, I could simply click on it, drag it up, and drop it at the top of that list. And you'll see it's now in front of everything. 
So when it comes to layering the parts of your face, whether it be hair, eyes, mouth or whatever, or indeed other items of clothing, hats or t-shirts or scarves or ties or whatever you want to put on your character, uh, then using the selection tool, the selection pane rather, for reordering the layers of items is really, really helpful. So I'm going to close that for the moment. And uh, in fact, we don't even need that thumbnail uh, panel either. Uh, so once we've got the layers sorted, we just need to position the items where we want them. So that's my first pair of eyes where I want them. Now, what I need to do next is to duplicate those, and this will be the button that I'll click when I want to select that particular expression. So these are the eyes, that's a copy of them, miniaturized, so made smaller, so that I can click on it and choose those eyes. Next, what I need to do is name this shape, because our code, when we click these eyes, will look for these particular expressions, this particular item here, um, and it'll need to look for it by name. So this is where we want the selection pane again, and currently these eyes are called picture 13, and I'm going to call them eyes 1. And I'm going to use a space there, that'll make it easier for coding later on. So eyes one, and now on the right hand side of this, you'll see that there's a little eye, and that determines whether this shape is visible or not. And we can see that by clicking that, we can make that particular shape um, visible or invisible. We're not deleting it, it's still there, but we just want to make it invisible. So that's now made invisible, um, and that's fine. We're gonna do the same process with this set of eyes. So we're going to make them about the right size, imagine that perhaps put them in the middle, uh, that's about fine. And then again, we're going to duplicate them so that we can have a little button on the right hand side to click if we want that particular expression. There we are, it looks as though they're looking at each other now. Uh, so once we've got a little button, the main eyes that we're going to use, we need to rename to eyes two. And of course, you can carry on like this, making as many different expressions or pairs of eyes as you want. But this pair, again, is going to be made invisible. So we have two hidden pairs of eyes named eyes1 and eyes2, two buttons over here ready for some code, and a clear button that will need some code as well. We don't need the selection pane, but what we do now need is to write some code. Now, you need the developer tab at the top, but it's possible you may not have that if you've not done coding before. And by the way, don't worry, the coding is really, really simple. If you don't have the developer toolbar, then what you'll need to do is to click anywhere in a blank grey part of the toolbar at the top and choose Customize the Ribbon. Once you do that, this window will pop up, and what you're looking for in this right-hand panel is the developer tab. Uh, now mine is already selected um, and I cannot see it anywhere where it is. There it is. Developer. So that on my screen is ticked but if you don't have it at the top then it'll be because that is not ticked. So simply put a tick in that box and then click OK and you will have the developer toolbar. So next step once you have the developer toolbar is to head over to the far left hand side where it says Visual Basic. Click that and a new window will open. It'll look like this. And on the left hand side, we can see our project. That's our current presentation. Right click on it and we're going to insert a module. So click insert and then module. And this gives us a blank screen, a place where we can write our code. Now we'll need to put our code into little blocks or what we call subroutines. And we need to name each block or subroutine so that the computer knows which block of code to do when we click a particular button. So the first thing we need is to write sub eyes one. This uh, will be the code that will make the first pair of eyes visible. So you write sub eyes one, no space, um, and press enter. It'll put these brackets in, don't get rid of them, we need those. And it'll also put the uh, line end sub in there. And in between these two lines is where we need to put our single line of code. It is just one line of code which will make those eyes visible. So we're going to start off with active presentation. 
dot. So that's simply talking about the fact that it's this presentation, uh, because possibly you might have more than one PowerPoint presentation open. Now we need to know which slide we're working on. Uh, this is only a one slide presentation, so it's simply slides number one in brackets. If, of course, you're using a title slide or something and all this action is going on slide two, we'll just change that number from a one to a two. Now, what are we looking at on slide one? Well, it's one of the shapes. So we're going to write the word shapes and in brackets uh, and in speech marks, we're going to write the name of the shape we're talking about and we call it eyes one if you remember. So I'm going to type in the name of the shape that I called. If you remember, that was in the selection panel. So on the right hand side here, if I go back to selection pane, uh, you'll see that we renamed the first pair of eyes, which are currently hidden, of course, we named it eyes one. So it's basically whatever we typed in here. That's what we're typing there. So we're looking at the active presentation on slide one, and it's the shape called eyes one and then it's again dot and what we're talking about is whether it's visible or not so it's dot visible equals and this particular um, action is to make those eyes visible so we want this to be true uh, so we can simply double click that it's true that's it that's all the code that we need in order to be able to turn that pair of eyes visible and we can test that. We can close this um, Visual Basic window. That's fine. We don't need that anymore. And what we'll do now is run the presentation so we can see this working. But of course, although the code is working, we haven't assigned it to a button yet. And this little dude over here is the button, what's going to become the button. So how do we link the code that we've just written to this button? Well, what we need to do is select whatever is going to be our button then go to insert and choose action and you'll see that there's this section here called run macro and if we select that there'll be a list of all the blocks of code or subroutine that we have produced and of course we've made a block of code called eyes one there it is so we select that and we click ok now if we hit F5 to run our presentation and we put our mouse over this little button here and we click the eyes become visible. Fantastic. So what we need now is to replicate that same process for the second pair of eyes, but also add some code up here into our clear button, which will get rid of those eyes. So let's first of all start off with this clear button code. How do we do that? Well, again, we'll need to go into developer and visual basic. And we'll write a little subroutine here uh, called sub clear. This will just get rid of everything. Now this is really really simple because basically we can just copy the line of code for eyes because it's the same thing. It's this active presentation, it's on slide one, it's the eyes one shape, but this time instead of the, uh, the visibility being equals true, we're simply choosing false. So now if we go into our code, now we select the clear button, and we insert that macro we've just created, which is the clear macro. There's our list of macros and there's clear. Click OK and then press F5. We can press the clear button to get rid of the eyes and press the eyes button to get them back. So probably now you're starting to see what we're going to be doing with this second pair of eyes. So let's go back into our code window. And again, I'm going to cheat here really because our second subroutine for the second pair of eyes is exactly the same as the one for the first pair of eyes. I'm going to paste that underneath, except that the subroutine, the block of code, is going to be called eyes2. And of course, the shape that we're talking about is called eyes too. Now while we're here in the code window, the clear button will need to not just get rid of the first pair of eyes, it'll also need to get rid of the second pair of eyes. So I'm going to paste a copy of that line in there and just change this to eyes too. So what we have is a subroutine for the first eyes shape, which makes that shape visible. We have a subroutine for the second pair of eyes which makes that shape visible. 
and we have a clear subroutine which takes each of the named shapes or named images and simply makes them hidden or invisible. So if we now try this uh, again, we'll need to assign the macro, of course, to this button here. So this is the second pair of eyes. We click on that shape, go up to insert, oops, action, I meant to click on. And then in the run macro, we can see all the subroutines. We've created all the blocks of code. This uh, is eyes two, which we'll select, click OK. And now if we run this presentation, I can select the first pair of eyes. I can select the second pair of eyes and I can click clear. But I wonder if you can spot a problem. Probably it'll be easier to do if I make both pairs of eyes visible and then I move one pair up. What you can see happening is that when I click the first button, it makes the first pair of eyes visible. Great. When I click the second button, it makes the second pair of eyes visible. Fantastic. But the problem is, we're just making all the eyes visible and they're starting to overlap. So when I click the second eyes, what I'll want to do is to make the first pair of eyes invisible. And when I click the first pair of eyes, I need to make the second pair of eyes invisible. So let's go back into Visual Basic and have a look at this code here. So this is the subroutine for eyes one. This makes the first pair of eyes visible. But what we want to also do is to make the second pair of eyes invisible. Of course, they may already be invisible. That's fine. There's no harm in just making sure that they are invisible. Now, we have a line of code here already that says take the shapes eyes two and make its visibility property false. So we can copy that and put it into eyes one. And we can take the line of code that makes eyes one invisible and paste that into the subroutine for eyes two. So we have two lines of code in each subroutine now. Eyes one makes eyes one visible and eyes two invisible. A subroutine for eyes two makes eyes two visible but makes eyes one invisible. And a subroutine for clear simply makes both shapes invisible. So again, let's go back to our subroutine. Um, I'll make sure the eyes are at different heights so we can see quite clearly that we're only able to see one at a time. So I'm going to press F5. Of course, everything's visible because I set it that way. So let's click clear. So we start from scratch. And if I click the first pair of eyes, there we are, we can see that first pair of eyes quite clearly. And if I click the second pair of eyes, you can see the second pair of eyes and the first pair has now gone. So we can easily switch between these two pairs of eyes by clicking either of those buttons. And of course, getting rid of everything by clicking clear. And that's really all there is to it. You can continue with this, adding as many features as you want, whether it be mouths or ears, hats, hair, noses. Uh, and as I say, you could create the whole body. You could create arms holding uh, weapons or tools or whatever it is you fancy. And um, the only thing you'll need to remember is that if you were, for example, to have four pairs of eyes in the end, then each of these subroutines would need to have four lines of code. One to make the selected shape visible and the other three making the other three shapes invisible. And every time you add a shape to your presentation, you'll need to add another line to your clear subroutine to make that shape invisible. Now, there's one final thing that I'll need to uh, just show you, because this presentation now has code in it. And because it has code in it, we can't save it as a normal PowerPoint presentation. Uh, code is blocked if you do save it as a normal PowerPoint presentation. So to make sure that we don't lose our code, what we'll need to do is head over to File and choose Save As. And I'm going to go to the desktop for this. There we go. And what we're going to do, I'll name it um, Character. There we are. And underneath where it says Save As Type, 
what we'll need to do is click on that. We can see a list of different types of file that we could save this as. The default is PowerPoint presentation, but you'll need to change that to PowerPoint macro enabled presentation. A macro enabled presentation will include the code that we've just created and that code will then work. So if I click save, there we are, we've now saved this as a file which will include all our code. So I hope that was uh, useful. I hope you found that useful and interesting. And I hope if you do use this in the classroom with students that they enjoy that. Uh, of course, this technique of making particular items on the presentation visible or invisible can be applied to a whole range of different tools and functions. So uh, if that made sense, that's fantastic. Uh, please do leave a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. Uh, if this is the first video that you've seen on the Tech Train, then please do remember to subscribe to this channel so that you're first to know when I upload new tutorials like this. Of course, if this isn't the first time you've seen one of my videos and you still haven't subscribed, please do click that subscribe button. It makes all the difference in the world. So click like, click subscribe. And of course, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, leave a comment below and I do read them all and I try to respond to as many as I can. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.